Today I want to talk about the origins of victimology. But before we get into that, we have to talk about what victimology is. So just like criminology originated out of uh, sociology, uh, victimology originated out of criminology. And so really the defining differences is that criminology is really studying the who, what, when, where, and why a uh, perpetration where victimology is exactly that. It is studying the who, what, when, where, and why of victimization. So for criminology, we are interested in studying, you know, why people uh, engage in crime, whereas victimology is understanding um, a host of factors about victims, victimization, and their experiences with the justice system. Um, so for example, we could study all the different types of consequences of victimization from financial to emotional to social consequences. Um, research can actually identify risk and protective factors. So risk factors are things that increase the risk of victimization. Protective factors are things that prevent victimization from happening. So a protective factor could be increasing lighting in a neighborhood so that there's much more visibility. Um, offenders will be less likely to commit crime because they could be seen a lot more. Um, risk factors for victimization could be things like um, um, alcohol intoxication, being a woman could uh, be a risk factor for certain types of victimization. Victimology is also about identifying and defining different forms of victimization. So because the future of crime is going to be digital, you know, we are going to see a lot more probably laws sur surrounding different types of cybercrime. And knowing that, we have to understand how cybercrime impacts victims. Other aspects of victimology to study is, you know, how victims are represented in the media. If you are familiar with the Gabby Patino case, uh, that is a quintessential example of the missing white woman syndrome, where there is research that shows that generally if when a victim is a uh, woman, particularly a white woman or a younger white girl that ends up missing, they get dramatically more media attention than uh, women and, and girls of color. Um, we also want to know characteristics of victims and uh, especially their victim, uh, their relationship to the offender. Um, we know that, you know, for certain types of crime, victims are much more likely to call the police if it is perpetrated by a stranger, whereas uh, they may be less likely to call the police when they are burglarized by a neighbor or a friend. And so the closer the relationship, generally the less likely uh, victims are willing to contact the police. We also want to look at you know, different types of uh, informal and formal responses to victimization, and more specifically, what victims are doing in the aftermath of a crime. Um, who do they tell? Why do they tell specific people? Why do they um, disclose to a friend versus calling the police? Um, did they go and get a protection order? Why did they do that? Uh, what was that experience like for them? And the more that we can kind of learn from victims' experiences, the better that we can inform practice uh, so that we can fill in first responders and help them understand why some of the behaviors of victims may seem odd or uh, not consistent with what they think somebody should be uh, reacting at. And the more that we can better understand how uh, victims are responding and reacting to crime um, and the services and the resources that they are engaging, the more that we can better prepare first responders to provide those resources and services. You'll also hear me throughout the semester talk, using crime victim and survivor interchangeably. Uh, just know that in certain circles. Uh, well, first of all, language matters. Um, and we always want to use the language of the victim and that we are working with. So if they are referring to themselves as a survivor, we use the term survivor. If they are referring to themselves as a victim, we refer to them as a victim. Um, and so um, especially we see survivor a lot in the domestic violence field where some advocates and counselors will be very clear. Like we refer to all of our clients as survivors because they have um, uh, survived uh, some type of uh, abusive relationship, things like that, or they survived a traumatic event. And we do this because some victims do not like to, the, the term victim. It can um, exude a uh, sense of like weakness and especially, for example, male victims of crime. Um, sometimes men do not want to be referred to as a victim. It, it impacts like masculinity, things like that. And so we just want to be cautious. Victim is a legal term. It comes from uh, the law in terms of the person that the law has violated. Um, but we often use this a lot in uh, our responses to criminal justice by identifying a victim. But when we're working with victims, we want to be respectful. And if they are referring to themselves as being a survivor, um, we use that language. Victim, we use that language.